June 10, 2009. These images appeared on the Something Awful forums in a paranormal images competition. The images were posted from a man by the name of Victor Serge, aka Eric Knudsen, who is in fact the long lost brother of Frederick Knudsen from the Down the Rabbit Hole YouTube channel. Current day, the images are removed. This post started it all. Years and years of fan games, alternate reality series, and a couple dog ass movies. Always watching. And despite the questionable quality of the products with budget, it did leave a positive influential scar on the internet with the trinkets of its charm. It looks like Slender Man crawling on the roof. The only thing is, he isn't wearing any clothes. Huh? Slender Man is important. So why does it suck? Okay, okay, I'll go into the eight pages, the arrival, and the movie later, but for now, let me just give you some context. June 20th, 2009, 10 days after those famous images were posted to something awful, a series began called Marble Hornets, being a Slenderman based alternate reality series that blew up, like, really blew up, and only popularized Slenderman even more. It finished on June 20th, 2014, exactly five years later. Then some shit movie came out a year later called Always Watching. Uh, who's watching? Not me. Soon after, fan fiction creepypastas of Slender written by nine year olds began emerging. The earliest tale we know, the Krushman, where a slender-like man dresses in a black suit, is tall, and appears in areas with trees, and worst of all, is German. Creepypastas would popularize Slenderman even further. Boom! October 2011, Slenderman gets his first fan game, which is actually just called Slenderman, a product of 64 digits Halloween game jam. It's black and white. Slender's like, but you can shoot him? Oh, and it's got the Minecraft grass sounds. That's pretty neat. 26th of June, 2012. Parsec releases Slender, the eight pages, baby. The one we all know. I'd love to laugh at PewDiePie and I dubs for. Soon after, more fan games were being made, like Slender Gear Rising. 26th of March, 2013. Slender the Arrival is released from the claws of Blue Isle Studios, not to be mistaken with the studio who released the Demon's Souls remake on the PS5, in collaboration with Parsec, alongside Eric Knudsen, the creator of Slender, acting as a producer. You poor soul. April 1st, 2013. Jeff the Killer vs. Slenderman comes out. You. Read this. Now. April 7th, 2015. No, I'm not watching you. I I'm never watching. Please just stop turning internet horror shots into a movie. Slender Man is basically a Gmod admin in the server on this little rock called Earth. SV cheats on and all. No clipping in and out of existence, appearing and disappearing at will, all in favor of trolling Earth's users for his own sick amusement. No one likes the server admin, they just put up with him. Slender's known to be like a mind flayer, you know, from Stranger Things. As such, warping the reality of his victims, offering a crazy zooted out shroom trip free of charge. So have you ever done DMT? Eventually, alluring chosen victims to their death or to become proxies, a concept made up by the Marble Hornet series, which is also where the operator symbol comes from, meaning no face, only that this one is skinny and my boss doesn't swoon over it. Proxy is a term used for mind-controlled victims, henchmen whose only purpose is to allure more victims to the Slenderman, like a fungal mold spreading from one slice of bread to another in that bag that you've had for a only three days? What? This concept is cool, and if this sounds familiar, we've seen it before in the recent Analog Horror series after the Age of Slender, Gemini Home video, and the Mandela Catalog. Mwah, chef's kiss. Bless you. Slender was so big, he traversed through the plane of fiction into reality. People even began spotting him in real life. Bro, wait, wait, wait. No. That is Slenderman. <laughs> The Slenderman, he's on FaceTime right now? Yo, this guy's iPhone? And 12 year olds across the globe became glued to mommy's laptop in before the age of mommy's iPad. Now these days they have Bendy in the Ink Machine, Poppy's Merch Front, Back to School Sit, <laughs> Granny 3. Then people with schizophrenia existed. Needless to say, Slender was big. But why were his adaptations so. Uh. Hoser like Slender Man. Ignore me until I start bagging that paper. Naturally, I went on to PewDiePie's video, which had a download link. Uh, it's gone. So naturally, I downloaded the first one I saw on Google. Oh, cool, is that a free tire, Scott number? So naturally, I went on to Reddit and downloaded the first one I saw, hoping it didn't try to hide free RAM inside of it. I have plenty, thank you very much. If you want to know what fragile trust issues with the internet looks like, you're looking at it. Oh, I gotta go on the boys real quick. Eight pages is very simple. You are in a forest. There are eight pages scribbled by a bumbling schizo. Find them. But tall white man follows you. And also your cardio sucks because it's a horror game. These foreboding pages you have to find allude to this mysterious tree-like figure warning you not to look or it takes you. That it always watches despite having no eyes. The writer begs to be left alone. The figure blends in with the foliage. The pages then suddenly turn in haste, begging for help and that they can't run, like there's some sort of mind flaring occurring in the writer. A figure emerging from the trees, but then it finally catches up. In full view, we see the figure where the writer is at an end, succumbing to, as described only by the words of, no, 
In an attempt to gaslight and boy boss, I even placed notes everywhere at some hotel I was staying at, just so the cleaners would get extreme paranoid personality disorders. Starting the game, I thought to keep to one path. People online have drawn maps out with their own paths, which I would not be surprised if a 12 year old had made them, though that was the demographic when the game came out. I quickly find myself not wanting to turn around to see if Slend is there, because one, I'm a yogurt male stoic. If I die, well, you know, it is what it is. But two, that leaves a window for him to appear in the path that I'm currently taking. Despite that, he will use the trees to appear in front of you. Well, you know, through the power of cheat engine, he will just teleport in front of you. Ah, ruining your optic gaming eSports strat that you had laid out. Your flashlight has limited battery, so you're more inclined to turn it off. Though, no light makes you easier prey. Five, four, three, two. Fuck. I mean, of course I got spooked. Only because loud noises with a quick flash on a screen. I'm not scared, it's just that my fight or flight wants you to fuck off. If you play Slender, you should download 0.9.6. Why not 9.7, you ask? Because in 9.6, there is a hidden game mode where Slender incessantly asks to bum $20 off of you. And apparently, Slender wanting $20 is a breach of copyright. So they removed that in 9.7. This is literally 1980-2012. There's also a daytime mode if you're ever curious as to what it looks like. It looks like shit. I would conclude with there's not much value a shot indie game could bring, but I mean, bro, Iron Lung. Slenderman The Eight Pages is a simple, charming game that is not good to play once the aroma of nostalgia dissipates. There is also a remake on Steam. Coming from the preview images, I can tell it looks great. Slender The Arrival is 8 pages with a visual upgrade on the level of This goes hard, feel free to screenshot With the occasional out of place texture here and there It's a bundle of inconsistencies from graphics to sound One time I heard footsteps in my left ear Only to turn to that direction for the footsteps to continue playing in my left ear? But on the other hand, the sound design is good. When Slender attacks, rather than just using the classic static noise, it mixes it up with radio interferences and artifacting. But in other times, it sounds like someone just bought their first Xbox 360 chat mic from some $5 eBay listing. The date is September 19th. My name is CR, on site of the Matheson family farm. Continuing my investigation. The Arrival is a game about trekking through long hallways or open barren areas, picking up the video game key cards to progress to the next hallway or open barren area littered with key card items. With zero sort of agency for the player, you have a flashlight you pick up and it displays the battery icon, which no matter how long you have it on, it never goes down. There's no finding battery so you can time it right to refill the juice meter. It's fixed and only decreases with every new chapter. There is no looming threat with the battery battery icon, only an indicator that the shit game is ending soon and I can't wait! That said, the battery icon isn't the flashlight's battery light, it's the cameras because the game is pretty much a found footage game. This is fine for the theme it's going for, but it would have been way more engaging for the player to have any influence, like Outlast. The story is told through the environments and mainly notes that sometimes correspond with the area you're currently in. But they can be easy to miss, which means you can miss out on the story. There's no journal system, meaning you have to go to the main menu to view the notes, which if you do, you lose progress because there are no saves and you can only resume mid-game at the very start of the chapters. So I just made my own notes as I played. Huh. I don't remember writing that. Though sometimes its player direction is done well. When you initially enter the house that belongs to Kate in which she's trying to sell, and without a flashlight, you can barely see anything. Upon finding the flashlight and returning to the entrance, you can see markings and scribbles along the wall. And to be honest, I can see why the scooter moms have their toddlers on leashes now. The game has restraint in the beginning, which I do respect, with a spooky silhouette of the dream stand's father on the horizon. Let us just fix that real quick. And nature returns. Turns out the walls up here are just as invisible as those dads. In chapter 2, The Eight Pages, which is just a love letter to the game which Parsec also made, Slender is way too aggressive and annoying to get past once you get to page 5 or even 4 on normal difficulty. You may even save your stamina, but even then he will still outrun you. The game will even try to mess with you if you pause the game for too long. Unpausing will have Slender spawn right behind you. Like it's a warning to not do that. Those fourth wall punishments are great, and Slender is the perfect type of medium for that, as it's meant to be a character ingrained in the real world. One design choice which I find redundant in this chapter is that if you die, 
the monuments change? It's a jarring way to stop players from mapping things out in their heads after a checkpoint reset and becomes a continuity break. The notes already spawn in the same areas despite what monument is present. If you wanted to have this section be RNG so some greaser can't giga sweat, you could just do what Slender the 8 pages did and move the pages around every new game. On top of that, you were also sent to different spawn points, so you could have just relied on that system to throw your players off too? <laughs> you know what? Fuck it, this is too hard. Oh, 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 being in this chapter all of a sudden. Was that the work of the new Mountain Dew battery acid flavor that I drank two minutes ago? Wait, where's Master Chief? Oh, right, he got the team auto balance. Slender's AI throughout the game is very hit or miss. Sometimes he appears at the perfect time. And other times it's, uh... Yeah. Later in the game, you come across some tapes with some backstory. In one of the tapes, you play as Carl Ross, who you'll commonly see as CR on the notes. I like how because he's faceless, his wiki picture just shows the shadow from the player model in this tape. I mean, it's it's just goofy, I like it. In this chapter, we look for a child who got taken by Slenderman and turned into a proxy. This chapter obtains the rarity of good horror. Like when a figure stands in a hallway and then disappears. It's one of the rare moments where the game doesn't rely on jump scares. And if you turn around fast enough, you can see him run past the door, which is always a plus. Unfortunately, that's where the very little compliments end for the arrival. The camera has as much head bobbing than dubstep mushers, Jared Leto's Joker has been in this cave, unresponsive menus resulting in moments where I accidentally clicked on give up rather than retry, meaning I got sent to the menu and had to start the chapter all over again, and god forbid you tab out of this game or your operating system travels to 1999. It's really cold. And that's pretty much everything I have to say for Slender the Arrival. Worse than I remembered, and sluggishly frustrating to play, accompanied by bizarre design choices with the side salad tier story and twist, which is very hard to be compelled by, even if I tried. So, the movie. The meat and potatoes of the video. Sadly, for this part, I had to give money to the people who created this abomination. And I paid 10 quid for ULTRA DEFINITION, only for it to be locked at 480p. Got finessed. And that's not even the worst part. Two days after, it got put on Netflix, which I could have just watched for free because I'm using someone else's account. So I just wasted 10 pounds. Slender. Slender Man was directed by Sylvian White, someone who's worked on a few episodes of Hawaii Five O, which were fairly received Excuse well. Me. And he did a couple episodes on the show Fargo, which, you know, it's a pretty good portfolio. It was also written by David Burke, who went uncredited as a writer on the Jeffrey Dahmer biopic that received a 5.6 on IMDb. Notably, Slender is played by Javier Botet. You will have never seen him before, but you would have seen him because he's an actor who made a positive out of his unfortunate condition, Marfan Syndrome, which conditioned him to have a longer bone structure down to his fingertips, featuring movies like Mama, Alien Covenant, and It. You know, basically playing the role of Slender Structured Monsters. Fuck you, pun intended. Honestly, playing the arrival had spent me. So I grabbed a couple friends around into a Discord call. I reached into my liquor cabinet to make this viewing easier. Two shots. And to hopefully make some good content for once. Listen up, kids. You want to achieve a personality, you can find it at the bottom of a bottle of Captain Morgan. Who the fuck made this film? Sony, fuck you. I'm refunding my PS5. How did you get this fucking drunk already? Because I had four shots of vodka accidentally. Look at how pale she is. She's going Slenderman mode. What did I miss? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> The movie starts off at a school where our protagonist is watching funny cat videos. Meow. Twitter poll. If you could stay one age forever, what would it be? Oh, we're just knocking the teenage relatability out the park, aren't we? Funny, funny cat videos, videos and Twitter polls. Minus the Twitter. Ah, now the writers are thinking like a YouTuber. What pop cultural references do we include to cast a wider net of an audience? I guess it's trying to cement that this is a world that is very much the one we live in, hence why they bring up things like Twitter, Facebook, cat videos. So the mythos of Slender 2 feels like it's in our world. But I've seen this cat video trope so many fucking times, man. It's like the last thing it does is make me feel connected to the film. Actually, it just makes me think that the writers are completely disconnected. With that said, all this iconography of Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, there is a huge missed opportunity in this film with the concept of proxies. Having got onto the villain's wiki of proxies, <laughs> I know, bear with me, I know I used a wiki. It said that proxies do work for the Slender Man through creating and manipulating objects, destroying or planting evidence, or creating videos slash responding on Twitter in order to lure victims in, which is the entire point of the game Slender the Arrival. You mention Twitter and Facebook in the film and utilize none of it only for the sake of LOL. 
cat video cat do funny thing. Uh -huh. Our cast of relatable spawn are Chloe, Katie, Ren, and Holly Knudsen, a reference to the creator of Slender, Eric Knudsen. We're then introduced to Ren's love interest, Tom, which I don't really think goes anywhere other than the token makeout scene that's in a slasher or a thriller movie. So what's the plan tonight? Big plans. Hey. Yeah. Top secret. Oh, I see. A circle jerk. <laughs> then we see Holly's sister, Lizzie. This movie does a poor job at attaching the characters' names to their faces. I had to look at the IMDP page to figure out who's who to follow along in this movie. Ooh, how engaging. It's like I'm playing my own little investigation game. <laughs> Her name is Holly. I just learned that now. Yeah, same. The crew plans to go to Katie's home to do some whatever women do and say Lizzie can't go despite being promised to. Can I come? Not a chance. He said I could come next time. I lied. Little did Holly know, she just made her sister the movie's plot device. You guys gonna do? Drink a lot of vodka and meet guys online. Yo, me too. Honey. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're watching POV porn together. Do you know how they have POV porn? For all the 0.8% of women that watch this channel, tell me. Do women really? Slenderman is brought up because Tom's clique of friends are supposedly summoning him, which they then chicken out of later. Did you guys really try and summon Slenderman? You chickened out. I chickened you out. You chickened out. Holly then asks about who Slender is, is then refused, responds by literally saying troll, troll, and pulls a scarily close recreation of the troll face meme. They then explain who Slenderman is for the unfortunate viewer who's watching this movie who is over the age of 30, who doesn't know what a creepypasta is. Slenderman can manifest in a variety of forms. Certain accounts speak of a hypnotic power that renders his victims helpless to stop themselves from walking into waiting arms. Boy, clean your desktop up. Why do you have three folders with absolutely nothing in them? Nobody knows why he takes who he takes or why he leaves who he leaves, but the ones he leaves behind are messed up forever. Ooh, more foreshadowing! This I kind of like, actually, to be honest. At least the movie is setting up a concept that it does obey to. The girls then look up on how to summon him, and they're adamant to perform the ritual before even watching the video. I mean, I respect the commitment. Most people would just watch the video and go... Yeah, that was interesting. I want to see what's on TikTok. Though, unironically, there are tutorials online in the real world on how to... <laughs> in real life. On how to summon Slenderman. Go into the woods and draw a circle onto a page and put an X through it. Press your face gently against the tree and close your eyes. Slenderman, Slenderman, all the children try to run. Slenderman, Slenderman, to him it's part of the fun. Slenderman, Slenderman, dressed in dark his suit and tie. Slenderman, Slenderman, you will most certainly die. Oh, white man! What, well, age didn't fare you well? You're even married now, you gotta, look at that ring! That ain't no Rolex ring, no, that's a watch. I bet you got that tie from the one dollar bargain pull at Sears. Look at your height, you could pull any pre-owned Tinder bitch, yet you choose to chase women at 2am. Kinda based. They then watch the YouTube tutorial for ukulele music and all. When you hear the first, you must close your eyes, keeping words unspoken. You must listen closely, for they are soft and distant. Clear your thoughts and await the second. Opening your eyes only once you've heard the third. Honestly, the ritual, too many steps, got lost, accidentally started funding deforestation companies. <sighs> They're then shown scenes of a forest with an isolated gate with no fencing to then follow the steps of the ritual, closing the eyes and the first bell toll and proceeding forward. Rationally, Chloe just thinks it's a dumb video, nothing coming from it. Are you serious? This is Shh. But because she broke the rule of no speaking after the first toll, of course she dies first on camera. <laughs> after the third toll, he appears. There's then an Illuminati seizure, which I'm surprised they're able to look at it without squinting. Though, I do kind of like the effects where the symbols appear in their eyes. I mean, it's comical and it isn't how light works, but it's visually playful. Holly has a nightmare, which is more foreshadowing, though it ends with the most confusing and out-of-place description of time in any movie ever. Dude, she, she won, slept she for one sleeping. week? Oh, she slept for a week! <laughs> I like how the visual direction was so bad, we all thought the same thing. After a collective coma, they go to school, where then Katie looks into a forest and she's allured into it. 
Her friends ask if she's okay, she replies with yes, then walk off when she's clearly not. They don't even turn around to check to see if Katie's kept up with the group. I love in that scene too, you can see Chloe yank at Holly's arm as if she's pulling her out of the way of the camera because it's zooming in on Katie. And of course, because of that, she is missing! Hey, now the movie's starting. Plot. Listen, if only they looked back. If you're the type of friend that actually manages to stop and wait for me when I have to tie my shoes, you're entering the favorites club on my Steam's friends list. So they break into Katie's home, doing some espionage behind her dad's back, stealing a laptop and take it back to Chloe's home. They go to the last site she's visited, which is basically an archive of cylinder sightings with the most J Station 3 AM tier acting possible. Click another one. Yes, Papa guys, back with another 3 a.m. challenge. Today we're actually going into Slenderman's forest to summon Slenderman himself, guys. Today I'm with my boy, John. What's up, fam? It's him. I don't like this. Dude, 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 he's there. Katie asks in Alleycat93 about Slender. No. This person is not a proxy, by the way. When they find out that Katie sent a video to this Alley Cat 93 character of her in the forest, insistent on that she saw the Slender Man. Though, in a situation where you're scared, in an attempt to avoid him, wouldn't you just not go into the forest? Even the text Katie shares with this user doesn't display any hint of alluring by Slender or any want to enter the forest. She's just in the forest, lay dramatic effect, le plot convenience. Another compliment from the movie, I know, unfortunately. When the video cuts, you can see a shadow enlarge behind them, overcasting them. It's subtle, there's no big cherry of scares on top, and I like that. It's what people praise horror movies like It Follows for. Something you may not have seen on the first viewing, but going back, you spot it, and you realize it's been there entire time. It messes with you and it's clever. Last compliment, I promise. I know the movie's bad and I will obey the popular opinion. Rand does some more research and then makes this really dumb analogy to her friends about how Slender works. He gets in your head like a virus. What kind of virus? Like a computer virus that infects your hard drive, but instead of your hard drive, it's your brain. Rand. So, a virus. <laughs> Wrap it up, people. Yeah. That's a wrap, that's a wrap, it's a virus. Turns out to get Katie back, all they have to do is offer up something that's with heavy sentiment. So they bring their sentimental belongings to a forest and break them. My grandma made this when Lizzie was born. She died eight years ago. Surprised you didn't bring one of your trophies or medals. You said it had to be something I cared about. Oh, how noble. Nuance in a character who doesn't like materialism. But also, what's with the sudden envy from Ren? It's out of character given up to this point they've been really buddy-buddy and good friends. They kill the lights to begin the ritual, and Ren begins to explain the steps. Listen, once we ask for Katie's return, we have to keep these blindfolds on. Alley Cat said not to look in his face. Now they wait. And wait. Still waiting. Oh! A strike two! You're out! Seriously, how is a person this bad at following instructions? This is a life or death situation. It's past the point of superstition in the world at this point. Chloe screams, then runs off and gets slender schizophrenia installed. Yep, I've shown it already. Which then causes Holly and Ren to also break the ritual, which now even that's damned them. L, because Chloe got the no skits OS 2.0 update, she receives a phone call from a mysterious number and then just accepts it. It shows her home and for some reason it takes a minute for her to realize. The camera then turns on no clip because God left the SV cheats one on. Then Slender appears behind her. Oh no, he's choking her. Oh no, make it stop. Wait a minute, she's choking herself. Oh no. And now she's missing from school and not receiving responding to texts. By the way, after the scene, she's still not dead yet. Tom makes another two second appearance, inviting Holly to see his Funko Pop collection. She accepts, I mean, of course. I mean, I would, I love plastic. I was thinking maybe we should do something. But then she suddenly hears something. Sure. You wanna come over tomorrow night at my place?
No, fuck off. You don't just get to look at that and not even react to it at all. Huh? To be honest though, I reckon this scene would have been done better if Slender wasn't in plain view. Maybe have him in the background blurred out or something. Something for the viewer to spot and realize on their own accord. Making the viewers more engaged and afraid for the characters in the scene. It feels way more foreboding than what we have here. I mean, you did it before with the shadow and even that was good. Ren then goes to a library to research upon Slender, which... Why? You have phones, you have laptops. You just know the writer was edging to get a library scene in his horror movie. She clicks on the Slender wiki, finding sightings of Slender and old photos, which were the actual photos submitted to that contest on something awful, which is a cute inclusion, I must admit. The point of this scene is that she's doing research to find proof of Slender's existence through behavioral patterns in history, though it is a doo-doo pointless stinky scene for the viewer because we already know the behavior of those who are caught by Slender. Nothing fruitful came from showing the proof to other characters to show that they aren't crazy because it was one after the Magna Carta. The, the I defendant. am not crazy! Then there's a book she needs, which turns out the library has it. She goes to get it. Q fake out jump scare. <laughs> with the most librarian looking posture, then cue long teased chase sequence. <laughs> Again, the writer wanted a library scene really badly. Yes, I too watched IT 2017, one whole year before Slender 2018 was released. <laughs> After Slender appears, there's a shot of Ren backing up on the floor, and it lingers so long it's kind of just awkward. She then loses her face! Oh no! Anyway, the editor decided to turn the lights back on. They go see Chloe, and after a soft jump scare, we see she's pretty much zombified. That's it, next scene. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, I don't either. I'm stuck in it. And you are too, you just don't realize it yet. Huh? Don't look at me like that, I'm not doing a thing. All right. Despite being in the thick of it all, Holly now doesn't believe that the mythos is real. Even after one friend goes missing and the other is just staring over a thousand miles, you now and still disregard the looming threat? Huh? Holly then epically owns the dribbler, refusing to read her proof, flipping her off badassedly, and leaving to see her cardboard of a personality boyfriend. Explosions. Ren is the most sane and logical character at this point. Minus the library. I'm surprised she's not even the protagonist. And Holly's behaviors have been all over the place, at one point seeming thoughtful. You said it had to be something I cared about. So to then being really dismissive and ignorant? It's probably some 50 year old dude living in his parents' basement getting off on emailing teenage girls every day. Do you ever think of that? It's a whiplash of personalities that Holly exchanges so quickly, so please, nobody show her a movie with Ryan Gosling or Emma Stone in it. She will be ruined for life. You hate bloggers, you mock Twitter, you don't even have a Facebook page. <laughs> Hey. Anyway, insert token love scene, interrupted by the TikTok snoring sound, interrupted by Venom reboot jump scare. <laughs> Reminder, Slender's real, go back to your other personality. She tells Tom about everything, so then Tom goes to watch it. Rip Bozo. Polly, realizing she's made a mistake, runs to the aid of AileyCat93 again, only to, oh no, the account's been terminated. I wonder what slur she said in Fortnite this time. Polly then starts hearing Katie's voice outside in the woods. Holly at night. If you're wondering why the film's moving so past at this point, it's because its pacing is fucked, not mine. She runs into the woods, gets quick scoped by some tree branches, and then... Oh my god, is that LeBron James? LeBron James. <laughs> she wakes up, goes to cough up, nothing, and then the VFX artist shook the screen a little because nothing has happened for 10 seconds. Then she has a tree baby or something. I mean, this part is pretty gnarly body horror, but it has zero connection to anything. Like, it could have something symbolic, but nope. Turns out Holly's sister, Lizzie, makes another appearance in the movie. Remember Lizzie? Me either. Lizzie's tired of this movie, so is going sicko mode on set in an attempt to escape the film. Oh my god! here, Lizzie! And then gets institutionalized. Unlucky. She's gonna be fine. I think it was just some kind of panic attack. Quick, nothing's happened. Make Holly, uh, uh, get stared at weirdly by the staff. Ha, uh, ha, uh, ha. Uh. Long hair and man with no eyes. Uh, uh, uh. Tall man walking down the hallway. Actually, that's the actor for Slender, Javier Batet. That's pretty neat. Holly then gets touched by his sister and begins to see things. Again, the pacing is fucked. But there's actually some pretty interesting visuals in this sequence. Especially the faceless woman in the bath. That's pretty cool, even though it's irrelevant to anything. Lizzie screams. He had no face. <laughs> meaning she's done the ritual. Turns out Ren has something to do with it. 
bitch. Okay, so now what do I do? Just sacrifice something you love. She then discovers Ren's room. It's full of deviant art fan drawings. No, she's cringe. We then see this Alison Riley who turns out it's Alley Cat 93. My goodness. And she's a psychiatric patient. I mean, it's a given. This goes nowhere, by the way. She was just a survivor of Slender, texting how he works and what he wants, which explains the next scene where Ren tries to kill herself. And Holly has some really amazing grip strength saving Ren. <laughs> Ren's crying, admitting to trying to sacrifice Lizzie to get Katie back before actually realizing that Slender wants more than things they love. I like that. And that he wants them. The Gmod server admin returns, breaking all the server rules. Ren is then fizzgunned out the window and banned for being too good at the game. <laughs> Holly then goes into the forest, seeing the familiar gate from the video, hearing the familiar bell tolls. Sounds of static actually builds as she walks through this gate, which is interesting because I don't think there's any sounds of static in the entire movie except for this point. She's then confronted by Slender. Hi there. She asks to be taken. Take me. To then run away screaming? Holy bipolar. And at this part while scripting, I had the film on two times speed because I wanted it over and done with, but it just looks so goofy. It just looked like a really shitty Charlie Chaplin bit. <laughs> Slender goes all Dr. Octopus. Holly is then taken by a tree and becomes one with the tree. Sacrificing herself to save her sister, Lizzie. Ah, nature is truly returning. Lizzie then senses this and wakes up screaming Holly's name to then have a Max Payne tier monologue on the definition of a meme. Holly, there's almost always a pattern. He only shows himself just enough to infect us. The more fear he creates, the more fascinated we get. We talk and write about him, share pictures, click on links, Photoshop images. That's how a virus works. That's how it spreads. Then the movie ends. The movie ends with the definition of meme. What a load of crap. Nothing came out from Tom watching the video. It never even delved into whatever his group of friends were doing. Chloe's fate was left unfruitful after her last sighting was just her staring. The movie was in 480p and Holly gives birth to a tree. How much did this movie get? Uh, oh, oh no. You know what? I commend you. You finessed us all. Thank you all for watching. I have an Instagram at Ramskagram, but only if you want to see me display the highest levels of insecurity you'll ever see. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure that you do not watch the Slender movie.